Hey, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co. and this is a video about IP board games. IP standing for intellectual property and the idea that you very often have movies, TV shows, books, and video games turned into board games. And specifically, what's more interesting to me is this conversation is about the times, the many times, that I prefer the non-IP version of an IP board game. And if you're like, how do you have a non-IP version that is the IP board game? The answer is you, you don't officially have, but you do often have ones that could be similar in some way, shape, or form that you consider the two very much leaning into the same genre, leaning into the same target audience, even if that name isn't present. We're going to go through 20 games today, 10 this versus that, and while not in all cases is my opinion the clear majority, these are all based on my opinion, and I think in most cases, people seem to prefer the 9-IP version. I think there's like two versions in here, two of them that we're going to go through today, in which the IP version is clearly more popular than the non-IP version, but for me, all of these are ones that I would rather play the non-IP, at least thematically speaking. The reason for this video is just because, I can't remember the exact reason, I was having a conversation around some IP board game, I can't remember the exact conversation I was having, but generally I find that in most cases, and there are exceptions, in most cases I would rather play something thematically in the same vein than the actual intellectual property turned into a board game itself. Now again, there are exceptions. Marvel's going to be a very large category here where I like the Marvel Universe enough that I very much enjoy playing through it in the tabletop space. And even in these games over here, there are a bunch that are the IP version that I still enjoy. This is not to say that I don't enjoy IP versions, rather this is to say that for me in most cases, but not all, I find that I would rather dive into a fresh take on that style of universe than the intellectual property converted into a board game. And that's my preferences. And what I'm very curious about as we go through this video is comment down below which times you agree or don't agree. Or, you know, if you're going through these and you're like, ah, I'd rather play this than that, I'm curious about your own input. I may do a follow-up video on the times that I do prefer intellectual property board games because like I said, Marvel's a good example, but there are other times where I could think of the fact that I think sometimes being turned into a board game can enhance it for me, but I think for me, I generally prefer when it's not the intellectual property itself. And with that, let's go into the actual 10 board games on the table today. Let's go and start off, starting off with Mythwind. Mythwind coming to you from Open Owl Studios. This is one in which they're actually uh, currently going through a reprint right now, although I guess right now is relevant to when you're watching this video. Either soon, right now, or recently, they had a reprint campaign where you can probably still get your hands on this one. But Myth Mythwin is very much tackling the world of Stardew Valley. If you look over here, you'll see Stardew Valley, which turned into a board game. This, for example, is one in which I assume the board game has sold far more than Mythwin. I assume that the uh, popularity of the video game space has translated very well for this IP. I know for a while you couldn't get your hands on this at all, and they've gone through multiple printings. I've played both of these games, and by the way, not in all cases have I played both the games. I'm going more by appeal alone, not gameplay. But uh, I've played both of these games. I think Stardew Valley is a good game, an enjoyable cooperative experience that possibly is a bit a bit more punishing than I'd like, given what it's based off of and uh, issues with player count and all that. But as far as the theme itself, I've only played Stardew Valley for maybe like three, four hours, the video game. I've played the board game several times. I like the universe, no problem with it, but I find Mythwin to be more charming of a universe. And again, it's not necessarily more charming, it's more that when you translate it to another IP, there is that inherent feeling of, of adaptation for the sake of commercialism. And I think that takes a little bit away from the charm, which is a weird thing to talk about, by the way, because in general, all these games are for the sake of commercialism. There's an art expression, of course, but there is the sake of commercialism involved, regardless of whether you started in the board game space or you ended up there. But either way, Mythin over here, Mythin's an enjoyable puzzle that I've been actually very critical of the original prototype when I played through it, talking about how I don't really, it, it wasn't for me at all. I've been playing through the final game. I will have some coverage on that as I go through more and I don't know if that will go up before or after this video. But what I will say is, while I still don't think the open-ended nature of build so you can keep building, play so you can keep playing, with no clear end in sight, while I still don't think that's a genre for me, I've been enjoying the Mythwin prototype, Mythwin final copy, more than I enjoy the prototype. I think a lot of areas have been cleaned up, and it's one that I've been going through, having fun with it. I do not think I'll be finishing it. I think I'll be giving like, you know, two to three hours to each character, and then moving on from it, having explored what the game has to offer. But either way, that's going to be Mythwin. Build so you can keep building, explore so you can keep exploring, have fun for the sake of creation, and with that, let's Let's go to our next pair up, which is going to be Nemesis versus Aliens, the uh, Aliens, a gl another glorious day in the corpse. Now, there's actually two Aliens games. Ravensburger has one as well. I thought another glorious day in the corpse was more of a, a parallel to these games. But Nemesis from Awakened Realms 
is a giant game based off the Aliens universe in which you're on a ship that is stranded in space, you have various crew members with different objectives, and you're all trying to survive while aliens basically try to shut you down and kill you. Again, this is very thematic to the movie Aliens if you watch that. And then of course we have Aliens, Another, day the, the, Another Glorious Day in the Corpse from uh, Gale Force 9 Games. This is a base game, a bunch of expansions. Same general vein, just this one much more based on the IP itself. And again, I think I think Awakened Realms has done an incredible job of, with Nemesis, bringing you an IP that their own IP, at this point it's their own IP, they've started turning their board game into video games, they've been going the opposite direction. I wouldn't be surprised if one day we see a movie from them, they're, they're, they're incredibly ambitious in what they do, and I think that Nemesis has so much more charm than the Aliens board games. And keep in mind, some of this charm that's present for me is a limitation of the fact that sometimes when you're dealing with IP board games, you are dealing with the, the limited trade-off that Sometimes you're working with art assets that limit the sense of creativity and feel more like a copy-paste from the uh, video game, uh, uh, video game, movie, whatever it is. So there is that limitation at play. But again, I think Nemesis for me just feels so much more appealing than the Aliens IP converted into a board game. Moving on, we have Through the Ages, A New Story of Civilization versus Sid Meier's Civilization, the board game. Now this is one where I actually haven't played the Sid Meier's version of the board game. I've, say, I've played Sid Meier's... A New Dawn, I think it's called. I played the second one. But I think the more similar comparison is going to be this one versus Through the Ages. Both of these are presenting to you strong civilization-based games. This is actually one of the first games I really wrestled with when I got into the board game space. Give me a second for a coffee break. When I first got into the, the board game space, at one point early on in my seeking out of all the best board games, I wrestled very heavily between these two games. Through the Ages was rated better. I saw that. People recommended it more. But I was a huge Sid Meier's fan, and the idea of a Sid Meier's board game that did feel like it was rated well, it also felt like it had more of a exploratory presence on the board that I felt was more thematic and pulled you into it, versus Through the Ages, which is just a card row. From a, from a buyer's perspective, I felt Sid Meier's would be the right choice for me. From a recommendation stand, standpoint, I eventually did go with Through the Ages, and oh my gosh, Through the Ages is amazing. Now this is actually an interesting one because for me, by now, I definitely prefer the theme of Through the Ages, the, again, that more innovative, fresh theme as opposed to a moving over from IP. But as a fan of Sid Meier's, I never really had a problem with the, the theme of Sid Meier's over here. It's definitely a game that I wanted to play, play, that I thought I'd enjoy. It's one that I'm still open to playing, but having played New Dawn, I do think this is a good game, whereas I think Through the Ages is an amazing game. Although, again, part of this video is focused more on the initial instinctive appeal as opposed to the inherent conversation of good, better, and all of that. Moving on. We have Street Masters Champion Edition versus Street Fighter the Miniatures game. Now this is one just based on the crowdfunding numbers alone. Street Fighter the Miniatures game is vastly more popular. Although it's not a clear comparison, we have 9,800 backers pledging $2 million versus over here on the Steam Forge campaign, we have, uh, what can we see the numbers over here? Where do we have the numbers? 3,600 backers uh, pledging 350,000 uh, pounds. Although again, not a clear comparison because Street Masters as an IP in general has had several crowdfunding campaigns, and I think the total is probably much more akin to around that $2 million mark. Uh, the uh, the Say of the Brother, the, the Blacklist Games have done, Blacklist Games, who is the original IP holder of Street Masters, they've done several crowdfunding campaigns, both on Kickstarter, on Indiegogo as well, and then now we have Steamforge taking over the title after Blacklist Games has had their issues, and bringing this back with new content as well. But again, this is one where I'm not a fan of the Street Masters universe, which is an interesting shift from the others. From Stardew Valley, definitely a universe I enjoy. Aliens is a movie I enjoy. Street Mas Street Fighter as a universe is one which I have. I may have said I'm not a fan of the Street Masters universe, but I meant Street Fighter. Street Fighter as a video game, I've never had any appeal to it. I've liked Mortal Kombat. I've liked... Tekken? I think Tekken. I used to play Tekken a lot, but for whatever reason, I never really played Street Fighter, and the characters always seemed crazy to me. Like, they just seemed off the top, so I never really got pulled into that universe visually. So, for me, there is an extra layer here where, which is where my opinion might not align with the majority for that reason in this case. But for me, Street Fighter is incredibly popular. Street Fighter got turned into a board game, several board games, in fact. There's also one, uh, Colossal Games had another one. But the, uh, the, and while this is popular, for me, this is the appeal, and again, maybe maybe for this one I'm just biased by not liking the Street Fighter universe in general, but for me, Street Masters has so much more charm and visual appeal and feels more coherent while still managing to maintain the craziness. They still they still definitely pull on that craziness in some of the characters and the backstories and the various clans you're fighting against, but again, for me, Street Masters is a much more appealing version that is clearly based off that same IP. 
Then we have Dinosaur Island. Dinosaur Island from Panasaurus Games. We also have Dinosaur World as well from Panasaurus Games. We even have Dinogenix. So we have three different games in theory, all clearly based off the same Jurassic World universe. And all of them, well, Dinosaur Island has a small asterisk. Because I've never liked the uh, color style of the game, but that, that very uh, 1970s, 70s Far Cry. What's that Far Cry offshoot game that had that, that appeal, that visual aesthetic? Either way, uh, the, the this color palette aside, the Dinosaur World, uh, Dinogenics, and then mostly Dinosaur Island all appeal to me more than Jurassic World turned into a board game, as is the case of Jurassic World, The Legacy of Isla Nublar from uh, Prospero Hall. This again, a solid game. I've enjoyed the game. I've enjoyed, I've played, I have not played Dinosaur Island, Dinosaur World, I have played Dinosaur Island, I have played Dinogenics, I have not played Dinosaur Island, and I have played the Legacy, Jurassic World, the Legacy of Isla Nublar. As far as games go, I've enjoyed them all, probably in order, being Dinogenics, Dinosaur Island, and then Jurassic World, Legacy of Isla Nublar, but all of them have had appeal to me, and again, Dinosaur World I haven't been able to play yet, but past that, Jurassic World, the Legacy of Isla Nublar over here, this one clearly pulling in that IP aspect, but again, I just, I partially because of the, the art and production as well, of what they brought in, I think it does a good job maintaining the charm, but I'm more pulled in by these fantastical semi offshoot universes than the case of the Legacy of Isla Nublar, which again, good game aside, at least good game for me, I know there's been some uh, hot takes as far as that, people have been enjoying the game, people who have been less enjoying the game, I don't think there's anyone who like really loves the game, I think it's like, do you enjoy it or do you really not enjoy it, and I think some of that is player count by the way, I do not think this is a game I'd ever recommend at four players, but that is a conversation for a different day. In any case, moving on to the next one over here, which is Primal versus Monster Hunter World. Now, this is actually an interesting one because twice now we've had Steamforge in the mix, and the first time around, the Steamforge games raised less, but I'm like, I prefer that one, Street Masters versus Street Fighter. The second time around, we have the Steamforge game raising more, but I prefer the other one. So, both times I don't align with the Steamforge game in popular opinion, I believe. The Monster Hunter World brought in, you know, 20,000 backers, 3.5 3 million pounds, and then we have Primal over here bringing in 11,000 backers and 2 million pounds, and again, Monster Hunter World also had Iceborne after that as well, so clearly pulling in more of that draw, and I like the Monster Hunter World universe in theory. I have the video game, I have not played the video game, I should get around to it eventually, but we do have is we have Primal over here, which to me feels just so much more visually appealing as a game, as a, as, and again, part of that's going to be the way the Video game got translated to the board game with the art assets that, to me, limit the feeling of creativity, limit the feeling of, of I don't know, it, it feels like a video game asset in a board game. That's what it feels like to me. But I like the game. Again, I've played both these games. I like them both a lot. I think they both have a place. I think Monster Hunter World is a little easier to table, and I think uh, Primal is a lot more rewarding to play as you deal with the advanced uh, monster IPs. This game has been landing finally. I'm waiting for my copy to show up. I am excited to dive into this one. This is... This game has been, I've been waiting for this game for a very, very long time. But either way, we have Primal over here with, again, the art assets, the production, a game made for the tabletop, a game being everything from from art, and again, clearly inspired by Monster Hunter World, there's no question. In both of them, you're hunting these giant monsters, you're crafting from the various components, you're turning their, you know, their scales and their teeth and their claws into the next weapons and armor sets that you have as you go through these crafting aspects. There's no question they're based on the same general IP, but one of them is based on the IP and the other is the IP, and for me, I prefer the look and feel of Primal. One thing that's actually interesting to, to talk about, especially in cases where you have Street Fighters, you have Prime, where you have these games, I think an interesting conversation is, even if the video game does better, so in the case of Monster Hunter World, it, it sold more, it has more popularity, in the case of Stardew Valley for that matter, in the case of uh, Street Fighter, when you have these times where the video game sold more, the IP sold more, the question of that is how much of that is just pulling in the IP audience versus how much of that is actually the greater appeal. Meaning some of these people who bought or backed Monster Hunter World have no idea that Primal even exists. And the question is if they did know it exists, would they still prefer the Monster Hunter World IP? That's an interesting question that I don't have any data to, uh, to be able to go into more. Then from there, we have Firefly the board game. Firefly the board game, and I don't know why, I think this is the first time in the entire video, did I do this right? Yeah, this is the first time in the entire video where I shifted the order, I showed you the one I don't prefer first. We have Zia Legends of a Drift System, which for me, by all intents and purposes, is effectively Firefly the board game. This coming to you from far off games, and this bringing you a span of the galaxy as you go ahead and be a bit of a bounty hunter, picking up the orders, dealing with pirates, possibly becoming more space pirate yourself as you go through it, and then ultimately trying to craft and improve your spaceship as you go ahead and just uh, become a legendary uh, space server person. Or you can play through Firefly the board game. Which, by the way, again, inc incredibly popular. There's no question about that. Like, even right now, we have 22,000 people owning Firefly, and we have 15,000 people you know, owning Zia. And I think that number's probably only gone up after you have the giant Firefly, the, the, the giant crate edition that was on GameFound. That's finally starting to deliver. I say finally, there's actually a pretty quick turnaround time. That's now starting to deliver. 
But we have Leo, Zia Legend of Drift System, which to me, as much as I'm a fan of Firefly, and I am a fan of Firefly, I think Firefly is a is an incredible story, and a story that arguably made better because it never had the chance to fade in the public eye, because they have that one season, they cut it short, and then forever after, people have been requesting and wanting to get more Firefly content, and now they have to deal with uh, getting that content in the form of a board game. So Firefly the board game, definitely supposed to be a good game. There's also uh, Star Wars uh, um, Outer Rim, but that's also an IP, so I don't know if that counts for the sake of this conversation, or at least it counts on the other side. But yeah, we have Firefly over here versus Zia, and for me, Zia is a better game system. Not in terms of necessarily the way it plays, but in terms of the general appeal. It feels fresher, it feels like you're not tied into a story. There are times where being tied into a story can be good. I, I think I should do a follow-up of 10 IP board games that I think are incredible. I think I should do that. I don't know if it would be a comparison or just an incredible thing, because I think, I think it would just be an incredible thing. But anyways, I prefer Zia Legend of Justice. That's where we are on that. We have Zombicide Second Edition. Zombicide, a arguably fresh IP from Come On Games. And I chose this one specifically because I'm gonna be comparing this one to The Walking Dead. Although there are a few possible options to compare it to as far as IP. There's Resident Evil, there's Walking Dead. I think there's others, there's uh, Dying Light now as well. There's a lot of games that are in the more IP-based universe of uh, dealing with large hordes of zombies. But because I was comparing it to all of those, and because all of those are more modern, I chose Zombicide Second Edition as opposed to, well, I could have chosen original Zombicide too. But my personal favorites in this universe are Zombicide Black Plague and Marvel Zombies, but again, those are less comparable. And Zombicide 2nd Edition, though, uh, thematically speaking, is going to be more comparable to those. And at least thematically speaking, because the gameplay of Zombicide 2nd Edition I thought was a little too easy, unfortunately. But uh, thematically speaking, I much prefer that fresh look. Even Resident Evil from Steamforge, which is a game that I really enjoy, one of my favorite games from Steamforge games, I find that... I still prefer thematically the sense of Zombicide itself as the new IP that it brings to the table. Marvel Zombies is a bit tricky because that one is not, it's like obviously a mixed IP in there. But in general, the Zombicide universe, both in the art, the presentation, the universes they've created across the various, uh, you know, genres or sagas they've gone through, all of those, I've just generally found that the appeal of them are incredibly well done. There's a reason why I'm a huge fan of Command Games. I think they do good work on the games they bring to the table, and I know that a lot of people are not necessarily as fan of, much of a fan of their, uh, the sheer amount of content that they put out, how much of it is necessary, how much of it is trying to trigger your FOMO, and I get all that. But for me, ultimately, as a company, they have delivered time and time again. Moving on, second last over here, we have Unsettled Board Game plus all new content over here, or just the Unsettled Universe from uh, from Orange Nebula, which brings you very much a Star Trek vibes, at least in my opinion, very much brings you a Star Trek vibes. And I guess I probably should have had ISS Vanguard, oh my gosh, I don't have ISS Vanguard on this list, versus Mass Effect, because there isn't a Mass Effect board game, but now there is. We're going to, we'll do a last minute segment on this one, but uh, Unsettled over here. Unsettled is killer, to me at least, is very much bringing into you into a Star Trek vibes. You're exploring your universes, you're dealing with what's coming at you, and you're also doing so with much more of a scientific approach as opposed to always being battle ready. Sure, there's fighting, sure, there's combat, sure, there's whatever. Actually, I don't know if there's combat in this game, but in the Star Trek universe, there is combat, but it's not necessarily the intent. The intent is the exploration and worlds and scientific discovery and all those noble aspirations. And Unsettled is clearly bringing that to your table in what Orange Nebula has done. And again, that could face off against multiple Star Trek games. In this case, I sold, I, I, I grabbed Star Trek Frontiers as a baseline point. But there's a variety of Star Trek games. This one's just based off the Mage Knight universe. So, ironically, the one I chose is actually based off a non-IP board game turned into an IP board game. But there's a variety of Star Trek games you could have chosen from Star Trek Frontiers, Ascendancy, Star Trek uh, Fleet Captains. There's a ton of games in this uh, general IP. But, again, for me... And I said, as somebody who does like Star Trek, I much prefer the rules of Unsettled. You know how quickly I would watch a TV show based on the game, based on the, the world and the characters of Unsettled? Well, I don't know if there's a lot of character growth in the character depth or backstory in the game itself, but watching a, I would 100% watch any movie or TV show based on the Unsettled universe. And I say that as somebody who, like, I don't know if I feel the same about the Vindication universe. Just because it's uh, Orange Nebula doesn't mean I'm inherently interested in their their worlds, although I'm saying that before having uh, played through the Chronicles version of Vindication, which theoretically would add to that immersion. But nonetheless, either way, my main point here is that uh, I think Unsettled is a fantastic game, and I think Unsettled is a very appealing universe as well. Uh, versus Star Trek, to me, is a universe that has done what it's done, and it's done it incredibly well, and it's done so in the TV medium. And translate to the board game medium, I think they are good games. There's a lot of good games in the Star Trek IP on them, but they just don't pull me as mu pull me in as much as the Unsettled universe does. And then lastly, or second lastly, because we're going to go ahead and talk about Ice Vanguard soon, we have Lost Rooms of Arnak over here, which I thought this page would show you more stuff from the game, but... Not really, unfortunately. 
Either way, Star Trek, the Lord, the Lost Ones of Arnak, Lost Ones of Arnak from uh, Chuck Games Edition, very much bringing Indiana Jones vibes to your table, and I think this is so much more appealing than the actual Indiana Jones board game, Sands of Adventure, coming to you from, I believe, Funko Games, which I think is semi-defunct at this point, but, uh, I mean, as much as I'm interested in Indiana Jones, Sands of Adventure, and I haven't played this game, I'm interested in playing it, I like Indiana Jones as a character, it's that same aspect, I just feel Lost Ones of Arnak translates more directly that feel, that charm, that universe, but does so in a way that doesn't feel like it's capital off the IP, rather bringing innovation and its own IP to your tabletop. And doing so successfully with a variety of expansions, a ton of success. This is a great game that I've had a ton of fun playing through and I highly recommend playing through it. And then, very, very, very lastly, because at this point I forgot about this, we're going to go ahead and pull up ISS Vanguard over here. Let's see what we can grab over here. And we have ISS Vanguard. Let's grab this. And this is going to be compared to, I guess, Mass Effect, which I, I think I didn't do this before because as much as ISS Vanguard, to me, ISS Vanguard is Mass Effect, the board game. That's what it brings to your table. That's that the, the genre it does, both in terms of the way you upgrade your ship, your crew, the way you're going through these alternating, you know, actual adventures, little mini adventure situations versus the, the greater world building that's going on. And maybe it's based off of Star Trek. I don't know. But to me, it feels like Mass Effect, the board game. And... At the time of us putting together the notes on this video, we didn't have Mass Effect the board game, but actually recently, I think a, a few days ago, we finally introduced, they announced, uh, uh, Modifius Games announced that they are making a Mass Effect board game together with Eric Lang. And make no mistake, between Modifius being the publisher, between Eric Lang being the designer, I absolutely plan on playing that game. But also the reality is that as much as I plan on playing through that game, I, I'm just so much more intrigued by the universe of ISS Vanguard. Let's go back to Awaken Realms in general. The world thing that they do is incredible. They build beautiful looking universes with beautiful looking characters, components, art, all those things, with solid gameplay to back it up. I'm very interested in uh, ISS Vanguard versus Mass Effect. I'm primarily going to play it because of the company and designer involved. And I love Mass Effect. I want to be very clear. I love Mass Effect, the, the, the video game. It goes back to that same aspect. For me, for whatever reason, more often than not, although there are exceptions, I find that an IP translated to a board game, it's hard to remove that sense of translation and that sense of creativity that made it what it is feels a drop lost when it's converted into another medium. And I think this is true when anything crosses mediums. I'm equally uninterested in Catan the movie. I think they still have plans for that, I believe I could be wrong. They had Battleship the, well, Battleship, they had a Battleship movie, but I don't care about the Battleship board game. But there are times where there are exceptions. No differently to the way that I am interested in seeing Unsettled turned into a movie or TV show, although I was interested in the Assassin's Creed movie and that, that did not go well. But I think there are times when an IP translates to another medium that is done well. And I think I will try to do a follow-up video on this. I think I will try to do a follow-up video of times that I thought the IP did feel right when it got translated over into the board game universe. For me, I think they're the more the minority, but I am... I am interested in doing that video. But either way, let me know which ones you agree on. From these 10 games I've gone through, I guess 11 with Mass Effect and uh, Ice Vanguard, let me know which of those you agree with me that you prefer the uh, IP universe and which ones you disagree and you'd prefer, sorry, which ones you agree with me and you prefer the nine IP universe versus which ones you disagree and prefer the IP universe board game instead. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, I hope you have a good one.